Hello, and thanks for giving Newsy Palooza a try. We're the only world news podcast for curious kids and adults. So listen to us here or on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Alexa, or any podcast playing platform. In fact, and now. Episode this week with the spooky sounds of Earth's magnetic field. We'll let you hear it and explain just what it is. Also, the sad story of South Korea's stampede and India's bridge collapse. But a little more uplifting is the success of the one and only Taylor Swift and her record-breaking album. Midnights. <laughs> we'll also tell you how inflation might have affected your Halloween candy bag this year. And as we always like to end on an oddball, we have some very um snotty research to share about long nose lemurs called eye eyes. So cute, so cute. All that and more. So let's dive on in. First up, of course, is the big news story of the week. So, have you heard the haunting sounds that our very own planet Earth produces? What the radio waves of Earth and space? We did that story ages ago. No, something new and spookier. Have a listen to this. Ooh, that's creepy. Is it the new Stranger Things soundtrack? <laughs> no, not yet. This is work of the European Space Agency, which has released this audio revealing what the Earth's magnetic field would sound like. Uh, what's a magnetic field again? Well, it's pretty complicated stuff. It's the region around the magnetic material or a moving electric charge within which the force of magnetism acts. Uh, can again? Yeah. Okay. So the magnetic field. Isn't something we can actually see, but it's like a highly complex and dynamic bubble that keeps the Earth safe from cosmic radiation and charged particles from the sun. In other words, it protects Earth from all the powerful stuff out in space, mainly the sun. So, without Earth's magnetic field, or should I say, shield, we'd be toast. <laughs> Pretty much. And thanks to some researchers from the Technical University of Denmark who were working with the ESA, while we can't see the magnetic field, we can now hear it. They took the magnetic signals and converted them to sound. Yes, there are links to the full five minutes of audio in our transcript. Now, sadly, we move on to the news of two tragedies this week. Yeah, both took place in Asia. One not far from us here in India, right? Correct. And you might have heard people talking a lot about the word stampede. Yep. Well, it means when people or animals make a sudden and often confused rush in all the same direction, often resulting in some being squashed or trampled to death. And that's what happened in South Korea, right? Yes, thousands of people, mostly young adults, were all in this one part of the town in the capital, Seoul, a party district known for its narrow streets and alleys. Well, when too many people pack into a tight, confined area, there's always a danger of a stampede. And loads of people were there because it was the first Halloween since COVID restrictions were lifted, right? Yes, too many people were there. A hundred and fifty. Of whom died. I don't like crowded places. I know. We should all take care when places get too crowded. That's also what happened on a pedestrian bridge that collapsed in the Indian state of Gujarat. Let's cut to our correspondent Yuvraj Sani for the details. Yes, it was a one hundred and forty-year-old suspension bridge over a river. That's a bridge that hangs from. Thick steel cables supported by towers at both ends. It's a major local tourist attraction, which had only reopened last week after being shut for months of repairs. Around five hundred people are thought to have been on the bridge, which can only take the weight of about one hundred and twenty-five people. 
at least 140 were killed. There is now a call for a judicial probe to find out if the bridge was repaired properly and who allowed so many people on at once. In New Delhi, I'm Yuvraj Sani reporting for Newsy Paloozy. Thanks a lot for that report, Yuvraj. All right, let's move on to some more uplifting stories. Something peppier, or should I say, poppier. Now it's the ace part of our podcast. That stands for... Art, culture and entertainment. Darling. Darling. So how many of you were up at midnight on October 21st to hear Taylor Swift's new album? I certainly was. But, well, okay, it was a little easier for me to do since I'm on the uh, other side of the world in India. So it was the middle of my day. Oh, yes, you were on top of that story the moment it broke. (laughs) (laughs) Well, even for those who weren't up all night, Swifties all over the world sure did make up for it because they've all clearly been constantly listening and listening to the new album, Midnight's. In less than 24 hours, it became the most streamed album in a single day on Spotify. And Tay-Tay became the most streamed artist on the platform ever. That's not all. Over on Apple, the album set the record for the biggest pop album on Apple Music. Wowzers? You mean meowzers. She is a fellow cat lover too, you know. (laughs) Oh, I know, I know. But I'm not done. The most famous cat mom has also broken another world record by becoming the first artist in history to have her songs make up the entire U.S. Top 10 list. Woo. Number one is, not surprisingly, Antihero, one of my favorites. Oh, and what did the 32-year-old pop star have to say about all of this? Anything? Oh, yes, she's tweeted, 10 out of 10 of the Hot 100 on my 10th album, I'm in shambles. Whatever that means. I mean, shambles usually means a wreck and a mess, but maybe she's being ironic? I don't know. I'm old. What's that? I'll tell you what. That's the halftime bell, which means it's time to hear what's making news around the rest of the world. Hold on tight. It's Around, around the, the World, world in 80, 80 Seconds. seconds. Hold tight. North Korea fires missiles across its border at sea into South Korean territory, leading the South to do the same in what's known as retaliation. In other words, payback. Experts say the North probably fired the missiles in its own retaliation over joint military drills earlier this month between South Korea and its old ally, the U.S. After days of silence, Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro says he will respect the Constitution, though he didn't actually admit to defeat to the former president, Lula da Silva, who won the country's latest presidential election. In tech and entertainment news, Elon Musk, who recently took over Twitter, says the social media platform will charge $8 a month to users who want a blue tick by their name, indicating it's a legit verified account. And Netflix says earlier next year it will start charging fees when users share an account outside one household. And finally, a teenager wins the $10,000 grand prize in the annual Florida Python Challenge by catching 28 of the slippery predators. The state runs the hunting contest every year to remove invasive Burmese pythons that, did you know, can grow as long as 20 feet? Well, thank you so much for that. Whippity wabbity zippity zappity wop of what's making headlines elsewhere in the world, Mama. (laughs) I love it. I think we should get people to send in their own versions of that. And we should do a sort of who can say it fastest. Yes. Let's see if anybody will attempt to beat me. (laughs) So the question of the week is... Did you get a little less candy in your Halloween bag this year? Oh, tragic. Well, if so, that could be because the price of candy has increased by 13% since last year. 
Okay, but what does that mean in real money? Well, last year's ten-dollar bag of candy cost a whopping one dollar and thirty cents more this year. Yikes! Why? Simple inflation. That's when prices rise, or more officially, the rate of increase in prices over a given period of time. Oh, like the cost of sugar getting higher. Bingo. And sugar, which, as we all know and love, is the main ingredient in candy. It's not called sweets for nothing. Yep, sugar has increased by seventeen percent. That means it costs candy makers more money to make those sweets. So they raise their prices, and we all got a little less candy this year. Inflation. Ah. On the other hand, it might mean we save money on dental care. And given how costly that is, well, that's got to be a good trade-off, right? Um, if you say so. And finally, let's see what the lucky dip machine has for us this week. Step right up. Step right up. Step right up. Go the lucky dip machine. The lucky dip machine. What's it going to be today? Today, eh? An oddball, no doubt. An oddball, no doubt. This story might be odd for some, but completely normal for others. Okay. I'm talking about nose picking. Oh, gross! You said it. This report is officially gross. Consider yourself warned. Oh. So you know primates, as in the most developed and intelligent group of mammals on this earth, including monkeys, apes, and humans. Well, you know those really adorable ones called lemurs. Yeah, originally from the African nation of Madagascar, lemurs have long tails, big eyes, and pointed, wet noses. Oh, I think I know where this is going. And the variety with the cutest name ever, the eye eyes. Also have, wait for it, a very long, thin middle finger. Uh huh. Which researchers have found is not just for tapping on wood to locate the food inside, or just for digging that long digit into the wood to pull out small grubs to eat. Oh no! 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 The British biologist Anne Claire Faber said she noticed the eye eye also inserting that long finger, and I quote. A surprisingly long way down its nose, and then sampling whatever it dug up by licking its finger clean. End quote. Oh, that is really gross. That's not all. The eye eyes are not the only primates discovered with the gross habit. <laughs> You're telling me. Twelve species, including humans, have been documented eating their uh boogers. Cringe. Yes, yet there is very little evidence as to why we—I mean, they—do it. Researchers are hoping their studies will shed some light on this pleasant topic that we're snot joking about. Get it? Uh huh. Yuck. And it's time to wrap up the podcast with the, the top, top five facts heard today. today. Fab fact number one: The European Space Agency releases the spooky sounds of how Earth's magnetic field sounds. What does the magnetic field do for Earth? Protect it from cosmic radiation and charged particles from the sun. Fab fact number two. Sadly, over 150 people died in the South Korean capital of Seoul during a stampede in a party district of the city. What's a stampede? When people or animals make a sudden and often confused rush all in the same direction. Fab fact number three. There was also a tragedy in India when a 140-year-old recently repaired suspension bridge collapsed under the weight of way too many people. What is a suspension bridge? A bridge that hangs from thick steel cables supported by towers at both ends. Fab fact number four. 
This year, the price of candy has increased by 13% due to inflation of raw materials, like sugar. What is inflation? Rate of increase in prices over a given period of time. Fab fact number five. Researchers found that a type of lemur called eye eyes use their long finger to pick their nose and eat their boogers. What is the reason for their long middle finger? Finding food inside trees. And don't forget, if you want to test yourself later on, then go to the Lucky Dick page of our website. That's newsypoolloozy.com, P-O-O-L-O-O-Z-I, and take this quiz online in your own time. I repeat, P-O-O-L-O-O-Z-I dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Love, Robot Leela. That almost brings us to the end of this episode of Newsy Baloozy. But first... Thank you, Jacob Bloom, for your awesome email saying... Your podcast is super awesome. I really enjoy listening to all the important stuff happening around the world. My mom also likes it. Well, hey, that's two big reviews then. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That has actually made our week. Thank you very much, Jacob. <laughs> If you enjoyed this dip in the coolest pool of news and information, then smash that subscribe button on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Alexa, or wherever you get your podcasts. While you're at it, give us a good rating. Or better still, leave us a review. Go on, we'll read it out loud if you do. Alrighty then, see you next week in the happy, splashy, giant, Nizzy Palizzi. Hello, Abby here. If you've got children and find bedtimes a struggle, I'd like to tell you about Coco Sleep, a children's story podcast designed to make bedtime a dream. Coco Sleep turns a chaotic bedtime into cosy bonding time. The stories are delivered in a pace that gently slows. Rumour has it that no one's ever heard an ending. So search Coco Sleep on your favourite podcast app and let's make bedtime a dream. That's K-O-K-O Sleep and I'll see you.